It's just like a term for that's the shit. It's the real hanky panky. It's the real hanky panky. Yep. Um, there were um, several people who messaged me prior to the live stream um, about the other name for the hanky panky, or the other the, the meaning behind it. No, it wasn't like it, that. wasn't it, it wasn't a sexual connotation back then. Not back then. Not back then. Now it is. Now it is. I think that's why that cocktail still exists. If you all are showing up, because you're thinking you might get some action. I mean, you Think will. Think again. I mean, <laughs> if you play your cards right, you will. You will. You know, cocktails are real sexy, and they can definitely help you play your cards right. <laughs> Welcome to the cocktail journey. We are here. We are back. We are live. And we've got Stefan back, which is great. Hey, friends. I believe it's a little brighter than it is. It used to be. It does uh, feel a little brighter. Did you guys bring more lights in here? Is there more lights than before? I don't even Is think there's possible? a I don't even think there's a shadow underneath my hat. That's how many uh -huh. lights there are. Just under your nose. I don't yeah, maybe just the nose. Before we eat it. Hey Todd. Hey Cheers, Daniel. Welcome. Uh, if you are joining us for the first time, what we usually do right now is say, hey, drop your name in the chat. Who are you? Where are you coming in from? Because I'm Rachel Eva. This is Stefan Kurpinski. We're here for another week of another great cocktail. You know who we are. <clears throat> We'd love to know who you are as well. Hey, Matt. Good to see you. Man. Pennsylvania's There's in the house. Hmm. I feel like there's been some upgrades. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut I you know. off. Right? Well, you missed two weeks. and then two, In two weeks, sudden, everything's you know. changed. We got T-Rex now. Uh -huh. um, everything looks brighter. I don't know. Your hair looks more epic than usual. Um, the screen looks really fancy. looks like you guys put some real good coding in on that. <laughs> Sean's going to say, don't hit the bar. It's going to affect the sound. Um, hi, Diane from no, it's Ohio. Right. Welcome, everyone. Um, we're going to get started. We're going to make the Hanky Panky cocktail today. If uh, this is your first live stream with us, what we do every Thursday is we go over a uh, different cocktail, 52 cocktails in 52 weeks. Uh, we try to stick to the, slogan. the framework. Yeah, we try to stick to the framework of sort of the 15 bottle bar. So, there's, these are five, uh, 15 essential bottles you can keep in your bar, and then with those 15 bottles, you can make 52 cocktails. So we're on week, I don't know what this is, like 15 oh, <laughs> or 16. I don't remember. Super exciting. We're excited <laughs> to have you here. The Hanky Panky is a yeah. favorite cocktail of mine. Same. Um, Same. I think this one's a sleeper that people don't think of pretty regularly. So. Yeah. So uh, if you want, if you ever have like friends come over, be like, we know cocktails, and be like, have you had a Hanky Panky? And they're like, Huh? Then you're like, hey, look, I just impressed my friends. You know, let's uh -huh. make some tasty cocktails. That's right. Um, <clears throat> hey, LM's in the house, Sean. Oh, snap. Um, oh, snap. Nice to see you here. Francisco. That's yeah. right. Yeah, Oakland, Oakland, baby. Oakland, specifically. Oh, my. Have Don't you been to Viridian lately? They just won, or they just add, got added to Esquire's top 25 bar <clears throat> list. Oh, Viridian, yeah? out of Oakland. There's some hey. great bars. Palmetto just opened. Just check them out. Jeannie's on fire over there. Those cocktails are so delicious. Because you, super good too. you missed the last couple live streams because you were both up in San Francisco and Oakland. Yeah, yeah, and Sacramento. And Sacramento. And then I was in Miami last week. And well, then in Miami. up until late last night, I was in Miami. Uh, hence the Guayveta. You know, can't take a guy <laughs> to Miami and not have him come back with a Guayveta. Um, but yeah, no, uh, Oakland's on fire right now for cocktails. Palmetto, Contiki, um, definitely Viridian. Um, lots of great bars. Yep. So if you're joining us for the first time, we're going to make um, the Hanky Panky cocktail first, and then we're going to talk about some variations. We're going to make a spirit-free version for those yeah. of you who may or may not be um, drinking cocktails or drinking spirits. Uh, this time we're actually introducing a spirit-free mm -hmm. gin. So if you have been making you know, non-alcoholic cocktails for a while and you have a bottle of that, that's great. There's you a couple know. different ones. There's uh, Sea Lip that's really popular out there that mm -hmm. you can find out on the market. This one's relatively new. It's from Australia. It's called Liars. They have like, I have to push it back to get it in focus. There it is. It's called Liars uh, with a Y. Um, you know, I'm lying to you. I'm not really lying though because they're telling you it's non-alcoholic. But uh, yeah, they've got a ton of different bottle, bottle offerings, both like um, spirit simulants, you know, like mm -hmm. a, like a non-alcoholic gin. But then they also have things that, ta that taste very similar to Campari or Sweet Vermouth. They have an incredible, um, uh, like, Alcohol-free prosecco, so like you could really make like a delicious, delicious spritz. 
um, non-alcoholic with all of their products. But anyways, yeah, just something to keep in mind. Uh, we'll things, get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. Things that you might want to go ahead and get ready uh, are sweet vermouth um, or your favorite vermouth. Definitely your favorite gin. Um, and then if you want to play along on the non-alcoholic thing, go ahead and make a little tea to get started. Um, if you have a simulant of alcohol, like like a like C lip or something like that, that would be great. Otherwise, um, you'll just have to use uh, water or a flavored you know water from your fridge or something. Um, and then uh, you'll need some fernet or a different type of enamaro. Um, this is uh, your basic like what just about everybody has in their you know at their local convenience store or you know bottle shop. You might have an old dusty bottle lying around, or if you love Fernet, you might have it really close by. Um, just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and the good news is you just need a little bit for this cocktail. Like, very small amount. I mean, obviously, use more if you want it. If you don't have a Fernet, you'll probably have an Amaro of some sort, some sort of a caramel Amaro, something like Averna, Montenegro, something like that. That'll work really well. So go ahead and get those things ready. Obviously, ice, your mixing glass, a jigger, um, you know, maybe some friends to share them with, and uh, we'll get yeah. started here in a minute. Who's doing, uh, who, who has friends over? <clears throat> who makes this kind of an event? I yeah, know. I mean, we're all starting to get vaxxed and, you know, right? like, hugs aren't, haven't been as canceled as they were. You know, I, <laughs> I, I actually had, I feel like I had more hugs this past week in Miami than I've had in, like, a year and a half. Oh, that, so. must, that must have been nice. Oh, man, it was really good. I mean, they're also <laughs> wide, wide open these days. So, I mean, Florida is. Five anyone five anyone eight, here five from eight. Florida? Yeah. Anyone tuning in no, from Florida? No, they're at the bar. No, they're all out of the bar. <laughs> Um, hey, Daniel and Christina have their son with them. That's really awesome. That's cool. Uh, so as Stefan's getting the stuff ready to make the first hanky panky, uh, let us know what you are bringing. Are you bringing gin? Are you, are you going to make the, the hanky panky as it is? I dropped the recipe there in the chat. One and a half ounce gin, one and a half ounce sweet vermouth, and then a bar spoon of fernet. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so Stefan's going to make this cocktail, uh, and let us know, like, what gin are you using? And do you have Fernet? Do you have a different kind of Fernet? Because there are, Fernet is a category of Amari. Right. And Fernet Branca is, I think, the most popular version, but also They've been the best distinct... at marketing their products worldwide, so they get it everywhere. But there's Fernets made from as far as, you know, off the world is, far away from Italy is the Czech Republic, mm -hmm. China, mm -hmm. Mexico, America. All over the place, people are making Fernet style Amari. So to get started, we're gonna go ahead and start with just a bar spoon of Fernet. I like to work my recipes backwards, keep you fresh. So, do that. Look at that. <clears throat> Stefan likes to chill his mixing glasses. We've talked about this. Keeping these things really cold, everything that's coming into contact with your cocktail, really wow. nice and cold so you can get that Proper dilution. So we're going to go ahead and do equal parts, one and a half ounces, 45 mLs of sweet vermouth. We're using Alessio. It's become a, kind of the new house favorite around here. I know. Um, Did you bring that over the first time? Yeah. Yeah. I left it here. Like, so I was pretty was really sad good. about it. I, was, I, I went to make a, a Negroni for my, my fiance. I was like, I have this new uh, vermouth. I can't wait to show it to you. I left it at, left left it it at Sean and Rachel's. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and do <laughs> one and a half ounces of the gin of your choosing. <clears throat> we all know how much we love this beautiful bottle, the botanist right here. Yep, Matt's Rip. also using the botanist. Um, Diane's using Bombay, John's using Martin Miller's. I love Martin Miller's, you all know that about me. Um, and Tom asks, uh, first mistake of the evening, any tips on pouring a bar spoon without over pouring or um, spilling? Yeah, I mean, you really just have to really rock that, that bottle really softly and kind of no, notice um, let me just throw, get this ice out of my hands. I, I, I mean, I've poured without pour spouts for many, many years, so I've got a few, got a few chips that I can share with you. Let's get the, Let's get the top cocktail going. Here. That's our favorite. That's our favorite. John says, pour over something that, that will catch it. So you can also do that. If you're, I mean, that's, that's if you wise. Overspill, that's wise words right there, for sure. Pour over a little glass. <laughs> Show enough. 
Yep. Sure enough. You just switch the left hand. Yep. And you stir in an opposite direction with your left hand. Yes, you do. All right. So you we'll notice that right um, Stefan's glass was also pre-chilled. Yes, everything's super duper cold. We want a really ice cold cocktail. Because we are not pouring over ice, so this drink is served up in a chilled glass. Correct. So it's really important that you stir long enough to get that proper dilution because once you pour it out of your mixing glass, it's as diluted as it's going to be and it's as cold as it's ever going to be because it only the temperature will only rise from there. And then we're going to go ahead and use an, just an expressed orange peel for garnish. And then I'm just going to toss that right in like so. And there is... Ada Coleman's Hanky Panky. It's beautiful. Yeah, right? Beautiful color, really dark, delicious, mysterious. Oh, yeah. That's really good. So a good Hanky Panky is going to have obviously all that beautiful, herbaceous, um, you know, kind of spice, uh, beautiful caraway, cardamom flavors from the Fernet. Um, really complex. The Fernet is a really complex ingredient. So really is the Fernet and the gin. All those, or the, sorry, the sweet vermouth and the gin, all three of those ingredients are very complex, um, you know, flavor profiles. So this becomes something that's really balanced, uh, but full, full flavored for sure. Um, and that beautiful little pop of citrus oil really does kind of bring the whole thing together and make it really pleasurable on your palate. Mm -hmm. There it is, the, uh, the hanky panky. You're like, mm. it looks amazing. Mm. <laughs> Is this starting to become torture at this age? It is it's starting, it's starting to become torture. Uh, anyone who's been involved in the cocktail industry and also uh, had a baby while you were involved in the cocktail industry, you get what I'm talking about here. Right. <laughs> so mm. we got two months, you guys. Two months, and it should be back in business. All right, so everybody's using, at this point, I think, like in the in the in these live streams, you guys have gotten really good at some really fantastic ingredients. I mean... We're using Koki Vermouth, which is one of my favorites. You know, Sapphire, Beef Eater, um, Punta Mess. Very nice touch there, Lisa. Mm -hmm. um, what do you all think about this cocktail? This one's uh, kind of a, a fun one. Um, something that, you know, not everybody thinks of right square away. It's not the one that jumps out at you when you're reading through a cocktail book. Um, other than the name, I think people love a good name that, that sounds kind of sexy. Um, but actually making this properly and diluting it properly... I think you find this one, you know, especially if you like the, the whole cocktail family of like sweet martinis, I guess is what, what they used to call them. But yeah. the Bijou, the Martinez, that whole line of cocktails, this one kind of is, is in that range. Um, I think you find this one spectacular. Mm -hmm. It's great. You know, the, the thing that always throws me off and is like a nice surprise for me is whenever I see a cocktail that looks like this, I think dark, boozy, mm -hmm. must be some kind of whiskey. It must be, you know, something else. And it's a gin-based cocktail, but it's this beautiful, dark, and then also lightfully, like delightfully light and complex right. at the same time. Yeah, it, it, gin-stirred cocktails are a lot of fun because mm -hmm. they're a little lighter on your palate. You know, mm -hmm. they, don't, they, they haven't seen age in a, in a, in a barrel. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're a little lighter on the palate, a little lighter mouthfeel, really complex, right? Because gin is that, like, classic cocktail ingredient because there's just so many little, you know, herbaceous and kind of spicy or woody or, or citrusy notes to them. Mm -hmm. um, they play really well in cocktails. It's the reason why gin is kind of like the, the cocktail king. Yeah. Um, so I see a couple of um, great comments in the chat. One of the things we like to talk about at the cocktail journey is what happens if you don't have all these ingredients on hand, right? You John, just created a, a, a minor variation of a you exactly. know, classic cocktail. That's what you've done. Yeah. You know? So John improvised earlier this week when he used a lemon twist instead of an orange. Right. But he said that today that he prefers the orange. Okay. It was noticeable, right? Noticeable difference. Um, would love to hear what exactly was like more noticeable about it and why you prefer the orange over the lemon. Mm -hmm. um, and then Matt said that he also used a lemon. Right. And he's tempted he was to out of add... Orange. Yeah. A dash of orange bitters. Yeah, why not? Go for it. I think you should try that. You should. I think that's kind of one of the reasons why orange bitters exist is that you can. It's another. It's just another way of getting orange into your cocktails, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And it adds a little extra complexity, right? Because there's there's more than just orange oils in here. There's um, there's uh, you know some aromatic herbs. There's some spices, some roots. So you get you get an added you know bonus that you've added a, a fourth dimension of of like really intense you know flavor profile. Mm -hmm. So Diane says this is going on her list of go-to cocktails. Nice. Another one. Another I'm, one for the I book. I know we would. I, honestly, this one is really like one of my favorite like 
just stirred cocktails. Anything. Anytime like somebody's like, give me something that's stirred down, but I don't want, you know, and they list off like the four like, you know, ones that everybody thinks of. I don't the want old an old fashioned or a Sazerac. The, the Sazerac, <laughs> the Negroni, or the or like the Manhattan. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, yeah, no worries. Uh, so it's usually either, it's a toss up for me. I try to feel them out if they like more bitter bitter things, right? Then I kind of go for net. And if they're not necessarily like that, I'll usually go with a bijou or, or something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maria says, it looks very sexy and tastes delicious. Nice. Yeah. We use the, what is this called, a cognac glass? Yeah, it's a little mini mini cognac, <coughs> cognac glass mini too. Mini cognac glass? Yeah, but yeah if usually you... they're a bit larger. But this is a cute little uh-huh. one. But Would this you? works really well in a coupe. Or a Nick and Nora glass as well. Mm-hmm. So if you've got one of those, you know, just your cocktail glass or champagne, the, the champagne coupe, not mm-hmm. the champagne flute. Um, Matt says the orange bitters definitely perked it up some. Cool. And uh, Todd also used a lemon twist. It's all that we had. And vermouth and amas gin. Amas? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a red gin. It's yeah, an local. odd drink, but it's growing on me. <laughs> <laughs> amas is from uh, California, actually. Yeah. Um, and John said he, to answer our earlier question, the orange oil he feels works better with the flavors in the Amari. I won't disagree with yeah. that. I mean, yeah. I think there's cocktails that, that, you know, would mm-hmm. work out a little better with lemon mm-hmm. peel, with, mm-hmm. but not, I mean, I won't disagree with that. That's a great observation. Yeah. So, um, do we want to do, what do you want to do next? The NA or? Let's do the NA. That way you can get in on the act and then we can talk. Uh, give me a little bit more time to kind of formulate what I, I have an idea what I'm going to do for a simple variation, but you never know. Anyone here making a spirit free cocktail? Here we go. Um, if they don't have, because we did not send out in advance that we were going to be using a gin, yeah. a, a gin substitute. So yeah. If they didn't have that, what would they do? Well, I mean, if you, if I would, you know, ransack the fridge if you have um, like a flavored water or a flavored. Like sparkling water, even Soda water. we're gonna be stirring this down. Or... So, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. But something like a flavored water—that's basically what this is. It's they run distilled water through this you know, through a still. Um, what's how you make distilled water? Come on, Stefan. Um, <laughs> they run water through a still, um, and then they have a little gin basket, just like you would make gin, mm-hmm. and infuse it as it's you know airborne with all these like kind of more complex, delicate herbs, um, and make something similar. Um, Near beer? Yeah, sure. You can, yeah, just drink a near beer and you're close. <laughs> Are people still doing near beers? Um, I, I heard the other day that Salt Lake City is finally doing like full, like they're not doing Utah beers anymore. They're doing full. Oh, yeah? Full, yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. I guess like laws are starting to get a little more relaxed there. Um, but yeah, the, the near beer works too. Um, or, you know, you can do whatever you'd like. Uh, great. So um, I'm going to keep this relatively simple. I'm going to use equal parts of this and then I'm using a. Rose infused rooibos tea that I've added um, some sugar to, and mm. so what I did is I, I tried to simulate the amount of sugar content that's in a vermouth, which is uh, roughly a little less than one third. Um, so this is three parts syrup to one part sugar by weight. Um, three parts tea to one part sugar. Did I say that right? Yeah. Three parts tea. To sorry. Three parts <laughs> tea. To, I, I had a feeling I, I messed that up. It's three parts tea to one part sugar by weight. So that's how I did that. So we're going to use these two ingredients in, in equal amounts, mm-hmm. just like I did with the first cocktail. And we're, um, side note, we're going to do another version of the Hanky Panky. Mm-hmm. And so if you were thinking about the first one that you had and what you might like to do different, you know, like Tom put a, a, a question in the chat about what would you do if you're using old Tom. If you've got questions about how to modify a hanky panky, how to use what you have on hand, put those in the chat. Yeah, I'll and when go we make them. this, we'll we'll get to chatting about those too. That's what we like to do, kind of in the second half, and we're nearing that is begin to talk about variations, substitutions, and places where you can explore from here. Great, and then uh, here you go. We have uh, some. N.A. Bitters, actually. The Fee Brothers line of bitters is actually all glycerin-based. They use glycerin mm-hmm. to pull out all the ingredient flavors as opposed to alcohol. So this is a great option instead of having to... I mean, not that you're using a whole lot in, a, in an N.A. cocktail of bitters where it's really going to affect you know, your pregnancy or you know, your, your ability to stay sober. <laughs> uh, it, it's still like a nice little incentive to try mm-hmm. some new bitters that, that you don't have to worry about that at all. So I'm going to give this a healthy six dashes. And I learned that yeah, today seven. from Stefan that the Fee Brothers bitters is actually non-alcoholic bitters. Yep. Yeah, they're all they're all glycerin based. 
So I, I went I went one dash too many. I did seven of the okay. Fee Brothers Black Walnut Butters, which I think is going to add a nice dimension of flavor. And I forgot the ice cube. Ice cube. Yep, there it is. There it is. Yep, there it is. So, yeah, I think that if you're going for, like, a true N.A. cocktail, then, like, bitters is totally within range as long as you look for a glycerin-based bitters. Because a lot of other bitters are actually distilled in spirit. In their high like, too, so. You use such, usually one or two dashes. It's not going to... No, it, it really doesn't. But if you are looking to stay completely N.A., um, that's something to keep in mind. And there's, if there's products out there that, that serve that function, by mm -hmm. all means, give them a go. one doesn't need as much stirring because it doesn't have alcohol. Why is that? Is alcohol harder to chill? It is, yeah. Because of the alcohol content. Because of the alcohol content. Have you ever made, um, have you ever tried to make like a alcohol infused ice cream or popsicles or that sort of thing? You'll realize that it takes a lot longer to freeze and sometimes like much colder temperature. Which is why you can keep vodka in the freezer and it won't freeze. All right, there you go. Here's the uh, the near hanky panky. <laughs> <laughs> the not quite hanky panky. We all did gin shots before the live stream. We did, yeah, faux gin shots. <laughs> yeah, this and I was like, great. it doesn't quite have the same effect. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they put juniper, citrus, pepperberry, orange blossom. Jasmine, lime, juniper, you know. It definitely adds the complexity that you miss if you're just going to use, like, a soda water. You can't yeah. just – and we were talking about this with Brian for, um, like, a spirit-free cocktail. You can't just put water in there instead of the alcohol. You've got to do something else. This is one of the reasons we talk about the tea. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the reasons we talk about the viscosity of different syrups because it's actually not just the flavor of – the flavor that you're missing when you pull out the alcohol, but it's also like the way that it changes the texture of the cocktail. Yeah, it it, it adds a mouthfeel, like a weight to to the you know, the liquid that an NA version won't. So it does mm -hmm. taste a little lighter on the palate. It's noticeably not non alcoholic, but you get a complex flavor profile. And I'm drinking. You get something that's really sexy. I get to drink a fancy drink. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's especially if you're pregnant or you know you're abstaining or you're just taking the night off. That's Mm -hmm. A really good way mm -hmm. to do it. I love black walnut bitters. Uh, I was first introduced to them by, um, I think, Ryan Andrews at Craft and okay. Cars. Right, way back in the day when we had, you know, we were just doing old fashions and it's like, throw some black walnut bitters in your old fashioned instead of just your regular Ingo and it totally changes the drink. Yep, just a little variation. Super fun. Um, it's also essential for a, a black Manhattan. Mm -hmm. um, very tasty as well. Mm hmm. Cool. So the I think we talked a little bit about the history of, of the uh, of the cocktail, but I always like to go over this stuff. And, Let's do it. And, and reiterate that you know the history of drinking was written down by people who drank the night before. So you know <laughs> the and then you know we've subsequently drank a lot of it since. So it's it's hard to like nail down. You know, so usually we just talk about the origin story that you know is most generally accepted. This one actually is is really great because the bartender was around and was um, was actually like. At, they were they were actually interviewed a few times in London uh, by the publications out there, so there is like actual pretty good written history on this cocktail. Mm -hmm. um, but it was created by Ada Coleman, who was at the time the bar manager of the American bar, the Savoy, in London, England. In 1925. 1925. She started bartending over there in like the early 1900s, so like 1905, 1908, mm -hmm. somewhere around there, as just a bartender. And then eventually, um, after her mentor uh, retired, she took over the bar. Um, she, as the story goes, she made this for a, uh, influential person. He was, I believe an actor of his day. Um, one thing that she always mentioned was that in all the you know, interviews she had, she had, you know, done about this cocktail is that this person, she felt like this person really knew his cocktails and he mm -hmm. asked for something specifically, you know, off menu. Um, and, and so she created this cocktail that was just a slight variation on, on what she called as, you know, from the family of the sweet martini. What we know now is the Martinez, the Bijou, uh, the Manhattan, all those variations um, of martinis that included sweet vermouth. 
uh, but adding Fernet because he was a really accomplished drinker. He had an mm -hmm. established palate. She, she wanted to give him something that had a lot of flavor, but was really well balanced. And that's where this came from. The story goes, once again, everybody was drinking that wrote this down, was that she served him this cocktail and he's like, this is the real hanky panky, which I guess is like 1920s. Uh, you know, term for this is the shit. And <laughs> she's like, there it is. You name the cocktail and it's stuck. Uh, mm -hmm. I think obviously the name has helped this drink last into perpetuity and has seen many, um, has seen many resurgences, right? Uh -huh. I guess people start to remember this cocktail exists and they're like, oh, the hanky panky. The That's hanky such a cool panky. name. It's obviously, a cool name. Obviously nowadays the term is, you know, more uh, associated with, you know, sexual connotation. But uh, during the day that really wasn't a thing. They wouldn't call um, the act of coitus, uh, the hanky panky, you know? Um, if you think of it like that hanky panky song, like do the hanky panky or do the, you know, whatever, yeah, the hocus pocus hanky panky. Can't yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. It's more like that. Like just the, you know, we're just the just shit. You know? This, this is, is the cool. shit. Yeah. Um, same thing. That was a slight variation. The hokey pokey, like the hanky panky. Yeah. You, know? you just do the hanky panky and uh, so everybody's fun. happier. Yeah. <laughs> but that's kind of a bit of the origin story. Uh, the, it, most cocktails, uh, that we know today as classics or modern classics did come from the United States. Uh, but there was that period, this weird period that we did here, this experiment we did in the uh, 20s and 30s in the States um, called the Noble Experiment or uh, you know, U United States Prohibition of Alcohol Consumption and Sales. A lot of amazing bartenders left America, right, to apply their trade either in Havana, Cuba, Mexico, um, you know, obviously London, um, or Paris, France, um, and they taught cocktails to a lot of really amazing locals who then, you know, added their own um, style and flair to it. Um, Italy also had some really great American style bars, that's what they called them. That's why the American bar, the Savoy is called that because it's an American style bar, right? They were making cocktails, not not little duos, not, um, not like aperitivo. They were making true like American style cocktails, so. The hokey pokey. That's what it should go. I need to write that on my list. I've got a whole list of cocktail names. It's great. To the hokey pokey and the hanky panky. You're here. You're here. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. And true, John, there's a, I mean, many years later, uh, the Savoy cocktail book was, was, uh, was, is really a great, you know, encapsulation of that era of mm -hmm. cocktail making in, in London. Um, and that's a great book for sure. If anybody like trying to study classic cocktails, which is uh, where this was first, this was first published. Correct, right? not correct. this one. Yes, um, it was absolutely. I don't know if it showed up on the first edition. That's I don't know. Question. That is a good question. But it is like if the book that you buy now definitely has a hanky panky. Has a hanky panky in it. Um, <clears throat> so in Ada Coleman's original recipe, did call for fernet, fernet branca specifically. Yep. Yeah. Um, and if you have tasted different fernets and you know the, the flavor profile of a fernet branca, you'll know that like other fernets are very different. And so there are some kind of, there's some Amari that, I, I mean, Amari are so varied. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you'll really be able to taste the different flavors that this brings out by trying different Amari. And we were going to talk about, um, if you have a sweeter Amaro right. or if you don't have fernet branca specifically, we've got another recipe for you. Another variation that we're going to do. So if you are using something other than Fernet Branca or you want to try out any of the other Amari in your collection, some of you have a dozen of them that are collecting dust and you haven't used in a while, uh, then we we're going to do this next one. Yeah, so I'm still going to use technically a Fernet, but it's it's not it's about as far from Fernet Branca <laughs> as possible. Feel free to use Averna. Uh, Montenegro, any of the ones that she kind of mentioned, mm -hmm. any ca caramel style Maro, and if you don't have one of those, you can use Campari, right? If you're a big Negroni mm -hmm. fan, you have a bottle of this, you can use this in place. A Maro and Nino. Yep, absolutely. But Fernet is a really powerful, like complex, really aggressive flavor profile, mm -hmm. um, whereas some of these other car caramel Maros are a little less so. Um, this, this is what I'm going to be using. It's actually a Czech Republic Fernet, um, really tasty stuff. Jelinek? 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 I want to say that because it's got a little Jelinic. thing over the eye. So we're going to use this kind of in a reverse recipe, not quite so much, but I'm going to be using more of this than that little bar spoon that we had before. Um, and I would, you can use a different spirit. I would use, cognac would be great, right, to keep with the French profile. 
I don't see it, so I'm actually going to go rum, bizarrely enough. The I know, I couldn't find it. It's, down there. it's okay. I'm going to use rum. I made it the last time. You use I rum. It. Oh, you're going to switch it up from what we did. Um, yeah, but you okay. feel free to use gin. You can use okay. cognac. I know, I told you I was still kind of formulating it when, when this thing happened. So I'm going to go ahead and do one and a half ounces of the spirit of your choosing. Don't feel <laughs> obligated <laughs> to use a white rum. Uh, the one I put in the chat is you can go with gin, or yep. you can bring in some rum or something else. Absolutely. Or cognac. And then we're going to go with one full ounce of a caramel amaro, or you can use this check for net if you just happen to have a really well-stocked bar, in which case, why haven't I been invited over? Because <laughs> he's in Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, because this is going to have a fair bit more sweet, because... Amaro he has more sweetness than a vermouth. I'm actually going to dry it out a little bit using a dry vermouth. We'll just use a half ounce of dry vermouth. And this is a pretty powerful cocktail as far as ingredients, so I'm going to want to stir this a bit longer than I would normally. So um, go ahead and start stirring now if you can. I'm going to go get my eyes. I think we should do, we should do a, a, a cocktail naming competition. That's fun. Wouldn't that be fun? So we, we made the hanky panky, we made the hokey pokey. Um, as you all are making, if you're making this cocktail, I feel like you should make the cocktail and you should taste it if you're yeah. really going to like I suggest agree. a name. So if you're making this cocktail, um, if you're finishing up another other cocktail, then make this one next. And then let us know what you think about it and if you like it and you feel like... If you want to name it, let us know what you think. Margarita. There you go. Sorry, there's a lot of stirring, so uh, talk it. amongst yourselves. Todd says we've decided Fernet is too weird. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, that's why Amari exists. What about other Amaros? What other Amaros do you have on hand, Todd? I could absolutely give you some love, John, for split split modifiers. John, if you're using a split modifier, what are you doing? What's your next drink that you're stirring or sipping right now? All right, I think that's going to do. It's so nice to have one of these instead of, you know, <laughs> just one of these all the time, right? Hey, that's really good, though. I know. Sean put them in the freezer for a little too long, but it's mellowed out a little now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use, just like I did with the hokey pokey, I'm going to use both <laughs> citrus on this. And there it is. The uh, unnamed variation on the hanky panky. To be named. So John named. said his split modifier was uh, 15 mil Carpano and 50 mil Koki. Dopo Teatro. Very nice. Okay. Nice. Mm, there you go. Rum was a choice. I made the choice. You like that better than the gin huh. that you made before the stream? Um... Yeah, I like it. it. It adds a little tropical note to it. Uh -huh. I think it's fun to play around with cocktails, you know, and and honestly, that's yeah. it's really important for you all to do that because I've done it for 20 years, right? So I mean, I have a pretty good idea what we're getting, what I'm getting into, but I think it's important to kind of fail a little. Mm -hmm. you no, know, don't fail too bad that you're wasting booze, but enough where you can be like, okay, I see what happened there. You know, next time. I'm going to do something a little bit different, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or I now know I don't like Fernet. I'm going to use, you know, a, a Caramel Maro, mm -hmm. like a Verna or something, mm -hmm. that doesn't have that, like, heavy cardamom, heavy, you know, like, spicing to it. Yeah. How many of you went out and bought Fernet for this cocktail? And if so, did you buy the full bottle? And are you happy you did? <laughs> or bought, did right. you buy the little sample? And are you happy you did? <laughs> Um, Failures can absolutely be instructive. I mean, that's the way I fail. Yeah. I try, at least. As long as you're not, you know, and that's that's the kind of thing where if you're going to experiment with cocktails, maybe experiment with your bee feeder, not your botanist, right? True. Yeah, absolutely. Because then it's just not, you know, you don't want to have to suffer through a cocktail that you really don't like. Yeah. Because you 
like your nicer spirit for it, right? Yeah, and I highly recommend trying to stay as close to original specs as possible. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why that works. Um, use that, use those, you know, kind of guidelines mm -hmm. when making a cocktail off, you know, the list, off, out of the book, you know. Yeah, so um, Diane and James, you could only find the full-size bottles. What did you think about Fernet Branca? Yeah. Would love to hear. It's, it's, it's one of those things where people either... Well, they don't love it or hate it. Some people are like, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, I mean, I I grew up with Fernet. I grew up in San Francisco mm -hmm. and in the Italian family. Mm -hmm. And all the San Francisco bars, especially in North Beach, which is the Italian area, historically been the Italian area of, of like downtown San Francisco. There's a bottle of Fernet just sitting on top of every cash register. So like when you're closing out after a night of drinking with your friends... You're like, yeah, just go ahead and close. Like, I'll take two of these and just close this out. Actually, we'll take a round of Fernets and then close this out. That's just like what you do in San Francisco. So I grew up with it. I didn't, I definitely didn't like it the first time I had it. Um, it was something I like suffered through. And, and my, as you get older, especially your palate changes, right? Like, your taste buds start to burn off, like, literally. So you want more strong flavors when you mm -hmm. get older. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of, you know, where Fernet really kind of started winning for me. Mm -hmm. It's easier to sell it as a part of a cocktail instead of by itself. <laughs> especially, especially in this quantity, right? Like, if it's an ounce of Fernet, you're like, whoa, I don't think yeah. so. Sean says he thinks Fernet sometimes is easier to sell when it's part, like, part of a complex whole as opposed to by itself. I think the first time we ever had it was when some bartender bought us a shot, right? Because it was, that was the thing in the bars. It was shots of Fernet all around. And then it became other things. What is it now? Um, it's probably still Fernet. I think so. I mean, unless you're going to like a real industry bar, then it's a warm shot of gin. <laughs> it's like, um, you know, because like people, are, oh, you like Fernet. Everybody likes Fernet. But everybody will likes you, Will Fernet you do now. a warm shot of gin with me? And you're like, oh, why is this a thing? <laughs> why do we have to do that? Why, why do we have to thing? go you there? Can't really stir it down with or some a Ferrari. vermouth? <laughs> a Ferrari. A Ferrari is a great cocktail. Sure. Which yeah. is Fernet and Campari, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or a like a like a Bronar, mm -hmm. which is a terrible name, but a great a great 50-50. Bur Berman and Chenard. And Chenard. Yep. If anyone has Chenard, the artichoke, mm -hmm. you know, the artichoke on the bottle of Amari of Amaro. Um, yeah, Diane says it's interesting. It tastes kind of minty on its own. It does. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I it also t it also can t make a cocktail that wouldn't normally taste minty minty. Mhm. Mm but I don't get that from, you know, the, the hanky-panky. It might just be because it's only a quarter ounce. It might be because a quarter, quarter ounce to a one-eighth one -eighth ounce. Or it could be because of the other really the strong other flavors in there, in there mm -hmm. that, that, that is balancing out all, all those notes in mm -hmm. the Fernet. And if Fernet Branca is a little bit too, like, too much, if it's too herbal, if it's too mentholated, if it's too, like, on your palate then, like, consider trying another Fernet, because right. I found most other Fernets actually have, like, sort of a sweeter, mellower... Yeah, I mean, like they're, all, here, they're all using, or, like, you Fernet know, botanicals. And, yeah, Daniel, obviously, snackeries. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, we just crushed a bunch of those in Miami because it was hot. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that... Uh, the thing is that Fernet is a regional Amari, right? Mm -hmm. It's, a, like, an Alpine, you know, northern Italy Amari that has kind of botanicals that are found kind of locally and in, in, in flavor profiles that are, are appreciated locally. Um, so when other countries, other regions start to reproduce their own Fernet style of Amari, they use, you know, stuff that grows locally or, you know, flavor profiles that they enjoy, you know, regionally. Um, so everyone's a little different, right? The Fernet, the, the Fernet from Czech Republic is way different than the Fernet from Mexico, which is a bit sweeter. Um, a lot of the American ones try to mimic the flavors of the ones in, in Italy, but obviously are going to taste different. They're being made at a different elevation. They have mm -hmm. different they're different sources for their, their botanicals. So um, they're all going to taste different. And that's kind of fun too, right? There's this huge category of Fernet, and you get to kind of taste through them and find one that you like. Mm -hmm. And we also use, so it, it's interesting, because when you think about something like Campari, I think about this as it's an aperitivo. So this is typically considered like a before dinner. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it helps stimulate the appetite. You can have it like Campari and soda or a Negroni yep. is considered one of those before dinner drinks. But then Fernet 
is almost in that digestif category. It absolutely of Amari, is. Right? All, all, all other Amari, other than like the Aperitivo ones, the Campari, the mm-hmm. Aperol clones, the vermouth based ones, um, all the other ones are, tend to be on the side of digestivo. Doesn't mean they have to be, right? Like this cocktail, because it has gin in it, the hanky panky, I would consider this, you know, kind of a, a one that can sit right in the middle. Yep. It can absolutely be. Uh, before dinner aperitivo gets your palate going because there's so much going on but it's still also really crisp it's light um but it can also definitely be a digestif with the sweet vermouth with the with the fernet um it can absolutely there's plenty of herbs in there to help settle the stomach um and enough sweetness for that too mm-hmm. so it's definitely kind of it can play in both both avenues i tend to mix these and you know, just in the years i was behind the bar i tend to mix these after dinner mm-hmm. you know 10 11 o'clock um but I mean, I've definitely, you know, suggested them to people who, you know, maybe have had a, a really light cocktail. They're already moving into an app or something like that. Um, and it's a great, great version for that. Great, mm-hmm. great rendition. Yeah. So. And we actually, in our household, sometimes use Fernet as like just a little bit of Fernet on ice. Especially if you just went to Hodad's and you got a big burger. Oh, yeah. And you're yeah. like you feeling pretty full. That. Right? It actually, like the, the herbs help to stimulate. I mean, how much of this is science? How much this is right lore i don't know um there's a fair amount of he science might. to it i mean that the italians italians have been consuming heavily glutinous heavy <laughs> heavily spiced heavily like tomato um stuff is starchy stuff for a very long time mm-hmm. and they've found a way not to die from, you know <laughs> like we we find a way to eat all that bread with with the pasta, you know, with the gnocchi, with the, you know, risotto, like all that stuff with the heavy sauce and lots of garlic and butter. And somehow a, a shot of fernet keeps you from dying <laughs> when you're processing all that. So there's something there. Yeah. There really is. It's like not just genes. 27 herbs, roots, Yeah, there's and a ton. And they won't and tell you what they are because otherwise it'd be really easy to recreate. So yep. um, the Italians are very secretive on their Mari. Uh, Campari, there's only like three people in the universe that know what the recipe of mm-hmm. Campari is at any moment. So, But most of these Amari have like 15, 20, 30, 50 yeah. ingredients. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a very it's yeah, ridiculous. it's a very complex it's, it's a very complex list of ingredients. Um, mm-hmm. That way it's, it's really balanced between all those spices. Which is one of the reasons they're so distinctive from one another. And it's really fun. Uh, what's that, that pizza place here that we went to? That had like, oh, it had like 30 different Amari that you could just sample. Like if you go to a place that has a really nice selection of Amaro, yeah. it's fun to go in there and and order like a Negroni or you can order a Hanky Panky. Well, there's not so much in there, but ordering a Negroni and then saying instead of the Campari, I want it with this other thing or I want this or the thing. And they'll just like, it's a fun way of sampling or just ordering Amari straight up with right. some ice. Right. I like mine with ice. Yeah. I, I don't like warm Amari. <laughs> right. Um, Tom, great question about the Underberg. Um, yeah, they're, they're pretty similarly spiced. Uh, they're definitely in that same category. Underberg, of course, being beer-based, whereas Fernet is uh, Is it uh, brandy. Is Underberg and Amaro? It, I guess technically it's not, it's not an Amaro, but it is a digestif. Mm. Um, and it's, it's, like, it's, bitter, it's beer-based. It's higher proof, like a high proof beer, but, um. Yeah, I would definitely put it in that same category of flavor profile for sure. It has that kind of minty, you know, cardamom thing going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the Mexican one just tends to be a little lighter and sweeter um, and definitely less of the, like, the heavy, you know, herbs. It's nice, though, but it's lighter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would say more like – it has more cola spice than, like, fernet spice. Yeah. And I can understand where that perfect panky wouldn't be super – great a lot of dry vermouth with fernet can kind of it's kind of a clash it's just too many like what floral is a perfect things panky? is that a variation of the hanky panky no like a perfect manhattan where you're splitting the the vermouth between dry and, and sweet that way it's less dry um is that a name for any time you do an equal split yeah of, of dry of and a, sweet vermouth they call it perfect yeah there you go anytime yeah. you do a, a split of dry and sweet vermouth in equal parts it's called a perfect something Right, but it sounds like it's. Not I don't know who decided that that palette. was perfect because I don't like them. But I mean, that's that's I guess to each their own. So for those of you who didn't, who aren't, who might be watching later and aren't reading the chat, uh, Tom said that he tried a perfect panky mm-hmm. for round two. So he used half Dolan Dry and half Cokie, and he said it kind of fell flat, but a dash I, of orange. Yeah, I don't think helped. there's gonna be enough uh, like 
sweetness in there mm. to carry that cocktail because that sweet kind of helps balance out all those bitter herby flavors. And then also you're adding something that's way more like floral herbaceous uh, with, without that extra added bit of sweetness. It's going to kind of change the ratio a bit. What if you, you swap for Bronco Mento? You'd have a very minty... Minty pink? A minty I warned you guys pink. about that. I did. Yeah. I said if the you're Bronco going, Meca, Meca, I said yeah. if you're if you're going shopping for Fernet Bronca, make sure you get Fernet Bronca, not Bronca Menta. Yeah, <laughs> Bronca Menta is, is great in certain cocktails. This is not one of them. No, because as you notice, like there's a lot of cocktails that kind of bring out the minty, like Alpine minty vibe of Fernet. Mm -hmm. um, so if you wanted to bump that, like if you like what that does, you can use. Bronca Menta, which is you could in this. Like a it's mint, just a bar spoon, you know. But right, you could, but. It, yeah, I don't know. Just stick with the hanky panky. I mean, uh, it's a, I think it's a perfect cocktail, just the way Ada made it, um, and I think we can all learn from its balance and its mm -hmm. simplicity and elegance, mm -hmm. um, and kind of apply that to other cocktail making. Yeah, and in like three years, it's going to be the hundred year anniversary of yep. the hanky panky. I know we really need to blow that one out. By the way, I got to talk to the, I got to start talking to the Fernet reps. Uh huh. Be like, we need to make this a big deal because. There's actually very few cocktails that we all consume. There's going to be very few on this 52 list that were known to be, you know, designed by a female. Mm -hmm. And we should really celebrate that because especially in the 20s, there were very few women in our industry. Um, in my industry, I guess, is being a bartender and in, in, in the bar world for over 20 years. And so we need to celebrate those moments. Um, there's a beautiful bar, a spectacular speakeasy bar in Mexico City named after uh, the Hanky Panky, and it's called the Hanky Panky Bar. There you go. Um, and there's a huge, there's a really nice portrait of Ada there in like kind of like a, almost like a shrine. Like there's a lot of pictures of the Savoy and American Cocktail Bar and this nice little big banquette. Um, and I appreciate that. I think that's really cool that, that we are able to do that. There's only a few real famous like early female bartenders, so it's something to keep in mind as well. And she had a long stint there. She was she there had, for like 25 yeah. years or something like that as the lead bartender. Freaking legend. Yeah. Absolute legend. One of, the, one of those few people, I mean, hotel bartenders are really the only ones that are ever actually able to retire. <laughs> but like one of the few ones that were able to retire, you know, like good for them. Anybody who retired in the bar business, it's like, and didn't write a book, didn't, you know, become a brand ambassador, didn't do, you know, didn't end up working a different job. It's like, respect, mm -hmm. respect. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, if you ever want to go to Mexico City and check out that bar, I highly suggest doing it. It's actually um, behind, like through a cold box, like behind a taco shop. You'll have to ask a local how to get there. It's pretty confusing, but uh, it's pretty cool. And they have, it has one of the most epic um, out like doors because you walk through what you think is just a door, but you're actually walking out of a, like a Coke like vending machine. It's great. Oh, if you're cool. sitting in the taco shop crushing a taco, all of a sudden this door opens like this. What you think is the Coke. The you know, Coke door. vending machine. Yeah, and all of a sudden this guy comes out. You're like, what's going on? It's great. It's cool. He's like, I just had a hanky-panky. Yeah. So, many a hanky-panky. I have had a hanky-panky there. They're decent. <laughs> <laughs> they must follow the classic spec. What, all, what else do you all want to know? And how did your first or second version turn out? And I have gotten zero people recommending a name for this cocktail, so... Yeah, I mean, we'll keep we'll keep thinking about it. Where's John Park? Are you on the stream today? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I don't think he is. Um, is he is he our resident namer? Uh, he, he, he's gotten a couple right before. Yeah, he suggested. I have a laundry a, list of cocktails. He suggested we'll just a go band back name for us. What was the band name? Split Bass. <laughs> <laughs> That's, good. That's not a bad name. Um. Yeah, Bronco Menta is not used in a lot of cocktails. I I've had it used. Uh, who who made it someone? John, um, John Boy at the uh, yeah, uh, Craft and Commerce. He okay. made us he made us one that was like a dairy based, like it was, it was some version of a it was some kind of a flip. It was a minty flip with it was bourbon. A minty flip with I, bourbon I and bourbon. dairy. Yeah. It was like heavy cream. Yeah, heavy cream. Huh. It was like dessert cocktail, which I don't. Yeah, there's, uh, there's some good names in here, well, but I don't think of any that's pertaining to a hanky panky riff. I'll keep, keep I'll keep thinking. All right, we're going to have to, uh, if nobody gets creative, then we'll have to take it to Instagram and do a... Yeah, there you go. A little Insta post. Uh-huh. Yeah, we'll a, little, a little poll. On naming... Yeah, on, on stories. We can do that. Yeah. See, so I'll change the uh, the handle while I was gone. We did change the handle. Yeah, I think it's a bit more... Mm-hmm. Like, I would assume that cocktail journey spelled out was taken. 
Yes, and Cheers. it's too long to also be on Twitter. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. to also be on Twitter. I actually think it's better now it's, it's, it, yeah. than before. I think so you can find The Cocktail Journey on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Cocktail, J-R-N-Y. So, that sounds really good. That sounds way Come better. follow us because we post so oh. many beautiful photos that these people who are, you never see, <laughs> who are behind the camera, spend a lot of beautiful yeah. time on. Um, and so come hang out with us there. <clears throat> Sometimes we do giveaways. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a giveaway for naming this cocktail. Ooh. There you go. We can give away some barware or something because like we it. can do that. Uh, so what else do you guys think? Should we make another one? We still have like 10 minutes left. What? Usually these things go by so fast. I know. Yeah, we can make it. We're going to make another one. Steph is going to make another one. He's going to just yeah. like mix it up a little bit. I like putting bartenders on the spot like this. They don't get it enough right now. Right? Yeah, no, I mean, Come I'm, I'm bored. I'm sitting at home. I'm not doing anything these days. Yeah, right. <laughs> I feel oh, like... I shook two, oh, 220 espresso martinis in four hours the other night in yeah. Miami. It was 89 degrees and sweaty. It was great. So, you know, that's a lot of hard work, but it's not the creative work of saying, make me something new. Right? Right. <laughs> there oh, it is. he found there the cognac. It found it, folks. Watch out. <laughs> Here it comes. Oh, all right, so we do have, I'm glad we're making one more because we actually have this really fantastic um, vermouth that we just brought in. And this fantastic cognac. Oh, yeah, there you go. Nobody can see that. It's not in focus. There you go. There you go. See? And then we can just put some, we're not going to put this bottle in, but I just want to see how many we can stack. <laughs> all right. Yeah, cool. So we'll do. We have 17 foot ceilings, so. We can go. We can go for a while. Um, yeah, cool. So Alessio, this is a Canato. Uh, style vermouth, so a Torino style vermouth that has um, an added element of um, cinchona bark, which is actually mm. the way you derive quinine for uh, tonic. Are you going to do the second version of the hanky, or are you going to do the no, original I'm just gonna, hanky panky? I'm going to mix it up a little bit, like slightly. So this is a full ounce and a half of the Kinato, and then an ounce and a half of Remy 1738. Um, let's do something for those that don't like Fernet. We can use, yeah. no, we'll go with Coney, with, with Quattro. And oh then, yeah. And we still have that. So I'm going to do a, just a quarter ounce of Quattro, kind of orange it up. Another way to add orange, right? There's many ways to add orange yeah. to cocktails. And then because we had it, I'll use that black walnut again, to kind of add like kind of more complex Black walnut flavors. It's not as complex as Fernet, but it'll actually add that kind of like dark, yeah. you know, depth that you would get from the Fernet out of there. So this should taste nice. Oh, there it is. Oh boy. Throwing bar tools around here. Uh, I'm going to drop that recipe in the chat that I snagged have, like, so slyly. Bar tool company around here or something? Yeah, we do. Oh, we didn't right. want that plastic thing in the bar, so I just like tossed it out. Smart. <laughs> Ready? Good. Stop it. I'm gonna run away. Stop it. It's stuck. <laughs> Spank my hanky panky. Hanky Spanky. Hanky Spanky. Oh, Hanky Spanky, folks. <laughs> we got it. Yeah, we don't have any scotch in the house. Do you guys have scotch in the house? Yeah, we have scotch. Do we? What? It's, All right, it's in the now. under bar. Uh, it's in the under bar. We need to do scotch one next, Tom. Not today, but next, next time we're going to use a very of scotch because I do love using scotch. We haven't did, done right. Well, scotch technically is not in the 15th. Bottle bar, so we don't have any scotch specific cocktails. We were talking about booster packs right before the live stream. Yeah, whiskey's like whiskey book booster pack is pretty important. So, like, you know, if you've got your 15 bottles in your 15 bottle bar, but then you want to add, say, five bottles, what would they it's be? Blue. What is that? <laughs> it's like blue pieces on that. It's probably my five year old drawing on it with a crayon. Oh, yep, yeah, that'd probably do it. <laughs> That's nice and dark. Yeah. I mean, it's got the right color. Mm -hmm. It's actually mm -hmm. really delicious, but I think that's just because of that vermouth. 
So obviously we did not chill pre-chill enough glasses, but it's not gonna stop us from making a cocktail. No, and that's like so not enough cocktail smoothie. for this huge glass either. Like the wash line's it's way warm, up. It's gonna warm up fast, so we gotta drink it fast. Easy. Uh, it is an easy thing to do. Yeah. The production crew is salivating. <laughs> yeah. Dude, get after that one. The what are we calling it? The hanky spanky. Hanky spanky. <laughs> oh yeah. Ooh. Damn that black walnut though. That's good. Who is it that doesn't like black walnut? Somebody's been on here before. They scoff at black walnut. That one's delicious. It smells amazing. Man, the, hanky, the hanky spanky might be my new favorite variation. <laughs> So there you go. It's like donuts. Right? Yeah, it's got like a... It, why does it have a donut thing? It does. <laughs> it does. That's funny. It would go really well with those like lemon glazed scones. Oh, break them out. That Megan brought. <laughs> we got ourselves a pairing. <laughs> so this, is, this amount of giggliness is what happens when you make four cocktails on a live stream, not three. That's just that one added one. Please. This is what we don't show you happens behind the scenes is uh, Megan, who's behind the camera, is like an amazing baker. And she brings usually like Earl Grey infused chocolate chip cookies, which are amazing. And today it's these today she went full lemon scones. beautiful like lemon scones <laughs> with like the lemon zest glaze. Yeah. I, can, I can enjoy that and you full can enjoy that. And we'll just... yeah. They're pretty much the same thing. Can I get can I get a uh, cheers? Cheers. There it is. And someday we'll do food pairings with cocktails, and it'll be so much fun. Wait, who made a hanky spanky? Did anyone like? <laughs> did anyone want to pop on and say like, yes, I'm gonna make my fourth cocktail of the evening, and it's gonna be a hanky spanky? Because I would love to know. If you pulled out your sweet vermouth, your cognac. It's spanky panky. Spanky Panky, yeah, Spanky Panky, maybe. I don't know. It's equal parts, it's so it could either way. It's a working title. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyone else try another variation of the Hanky Panky and or explore in a certain direction, like we just did in an impromptu way? Let us know. If not, um, you guys are all talking about they're what, just like silent. They I must know. be making drinks right now. They must be either making drinks or just thinking that we're Spank. being ridiculous. Um. <laughs> Next week is the tea punch, mm -hmm. which is a very, very special cocktail. Oh, uh, we're going to have uh, Eric Long mm -hmm. back on. A.K.A. Shrimp Toast. Yeah, I, I, was, I said that because whenever I say that, people are like, who is Eric Long? <laughs> I know, I had to qualify it for you. Yeah, I know. I, I'm glad you got it. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, he's great. He actually, he's been to um, Martinique a few times mm -hmm. and has lived, breathed, and slept um, and bled uh, Martinique mm -hmm. rum. So, um, which the tea punch is like the cocktail of the French islands of Martinique. Um, typically using a, uh, a, like a, like a French style of rum, but you can really use it with anything. Cause that Holy Trinity of rum, lime and sugar is, is an excellent thing. And it's kind of like the islands version of a rum old fashioned. Mm -hmm. So, um, get, uh, anybody got an idea of what rum you're going to use? Think about that. Um, you can use anything, obviously, if you have a bottle of Martinique Agravel rum, I highly suggest having also, it ready to go. You can tell if it's that if it's spelled with an H, right? Yeah. Yep. Our H U M right. designates like an agricole, like a rum agricole or a rum from Martinique. Well, it's right? the way you spell rum in French. In French, yeah. <laughs> so, I know. so um, exactly. And that's why if you see a bottle of, of rum that has the word R O N, Ron. That's coming from a Spanish-speaking country, because mm -hmm. um, that's the Spanish word for rum. Mm -hmm. so. What do we have? We have this one here. Ah, uh, la favorite. So, uh, Eric, I'm sorry, Shrimp Toast might be bringing in a, a few other bottles. We'll see if mm -hmm. we get some spare. Oh, he here. should definitely have some Clement or JM. So um, go. Um, you can also, if if you don't want to go out or if you can't make it to the store to get an agricole rum. Um, just use the rum that you have. We'll make right. rum cocktails next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Exactly. And the fun thing is that you can drink, you know, an English style white rum with, uh, in this preparation mm -hmm. and at least give, get an idea of how this cocktail will play with an, like a more overproof Martinique style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's moreover just learning about the story of it all. Mm -hmm. If you've never had Martinique rum, if you've never had rum that was made from pure sugar, sugar cane juice, 
like fresh juice, not the byproduct of, of other things like molasses and what have you. Um, it just the story that that shrimp will tell about you know the whole process and, and the in the idea of rum making in the French islands um, might inspire you to want to go grab a bottle and give it a shot and and stir down a a, a rum punch called tea punch. Yeah, tea punch or Thai punch. Thai punch. <laughs> Thai punch. <laughs> Whichever one. They're I mean they're all delicious. The tea the tea punch and the the Thai punch they're you know they're kindred. They are kindred yeah. cocktails. So uh, James took us up on the the comment request. He doubled his fernet in his cocktail. Ooh. And he said that I think he liked it, yeah? Cool. John, uh, James? No, James, yeah. More flavor. Mm-hmm. Overall like it. Yep. Cool. Um, so John Schmidt also says, bring any rum you want. Light, dark. We're going to make rum cocktails next week. And talk about how you can adjust it to your taste preferences. So yeah, so uh, you know, start working on your swizzle technique. Uh huh. Yeah, a little swizzle, just uh-huh. like that. Yeah. I think people dropped off the live stream because they actually like our, you know, the modern definition of the word hanky panky. Yeah, I mean that's how I would do it. You guys go get it. <clears throat> yep. Bye. Have fun. Have a fun night. We'll see you next week. Um, if I'll be you, back in a couple weeks. If you're following us on Instagram, we post stuff there too. And if you're not on the email list to get some of these other tips in advance, just go to thecocktailjourney.com, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and put your email there. And we'll send you stuff. Um, all right. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. We'll do the hanky panky and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Bye, friends.